Okay, so we follow the wires from my office throughout this building. We followed the wires as far as we can sort of locally. We've talked about how the connection that you make on the internet makes its way out of the University of Buffalo, out of your neighborhood, um, but then what happens? So clearly there is some important core of the internet that allows you to make long distance connections from coast to coast or across uh, between different continents. And now what I want to talk a little bit about is the core of the internet itself, right? So if I was Neo, I would refer to this as the core network. Now we're going to go inside the core network. The core network is made up of these really, really high capacity um, fiber optic links that are set up to, uh, that, that handle just an enormous amount of traffic. So as you, as your, pa as your connections cross the internet, you eventually make it to parts of the internet that are extremely high capacity and extremely fast. Um, and so, and at this point the story gets, gets really interesting because at this point these connections end up layered on top of previous connections that we made to move other types of things. So, Despite the fact that you know, we, we maybe make fun of or look back on in a silly way the term information superhighway, the information superhighway actually crosses some of the same highways and trade routes that we set up to move other things. Okay? So here's an example. So this is from a 2015 paper that was done uh, by a series of uh, researchers that is called Intertubes, a study of US long haul fiber optic infrastructure. And here is the map that they came up with that shows the really long haul high capacity fiber optic links within the United States. And you know, you can recognize the shape of the country uh, from this map. There are some interesting features. You know, there's a lot of like really uh, high capacity core internet over here on the East Coast. Things thin out a little bit once we get out to the West. To some degree, this probably represents population density within the country. Um, there are some interesting junction points. So this, I believe, is Salt Lake City, um, which is a place that a, a number of different connections on the internet come together. And so you imagine if you were in Western New York and you were sending a pack it across the country to you know, Facebook or something in California, you can get a sense of sort of some of the routes that this packet might travel to reach its destination, right? Across these really, really high capacity um, uh, fiber optic links. What's interesting about this is let me show you a different map that looks somewhat similar. So this is a map showing the interstate highway infrastructure in this country. And if I go back and forth, you can see that there are some similarities. So look at this point in, Col in, uh, in Colorado, I think this is the one I want, um, where you know, uh, a couple of different highways come together, and that's somewhat mirrored by the architecture of the, in of the internet. So to some degree, these long degree fiber optic links are following a path that were laid out when we built the interstate highway system a couple decades before that. And of course, what's even more interesting is if you go back even farther, Look at this. This is the US railway system. And so these were the lines that were set up to, uh, these are some of the long distance railway connections in the country. And so you go from railways, maybe 100 years ago, to the interstate highway 50, 60 years ago, and now to these really high capacity internet links in the modern day. So this pattern repeats itself even when we start talking about some of the even more interesting connections on the internet, the ones that span, uh, span the globe and span continents. So the way that the internet makes its way from, for example, the United States to Europe is through these really high capacity undersea cable links. And this is a website called cryptome.org and they have a bunch of different maps and information about the various uh, cables that are carrying internet connections and the cable landing sites. So where do these cables actually come ashore, right? Um, it turns out that the cable landing sites themselves uh, tend to be uh, highly camouflaged. So here's an example of a cable landing site. Um, this is in New Jersey. Now the cable landing site typically is not right on shore. The cable is brought to shore and then run underground inland a little bit to a facility that processes and manages all the traffic that goes across that cable. So this is a cable landing site in New Jersey. Um, it's interesting because it's in this fairly residential neighborhood. So these are houses that are around it actually. Um, the name of the facility is interesting. It's called 17 Cable Drive. This is Cable Drive right here. So it's a, a little, little uh, uh, tongue in cheek. And if we zoom out enough on the Google Maps view, what you can see is the ocean. So this cable is coming in somewhere over here um, and then being run inland a fair amount 
to reach the point where it comes above ground, and then um, those connections are branched out across the country. Uh, this is obviously a somewhat a suspicious looking building for this part of New Jersey. It doesn't fit into the surroundings. It doesn't look like the house is nearby. Um, it's got a bunch of uh, cooling towers and other things, and so these are some of the ways that you can spot this, right? But this is set up purposely to be quite inconspicuous. Last thing I want to point out is that the, the transatlantic cables themselves Turn out that these follow old shipping routes. So when companies were hired to lay down this transatlantic cable, in many cases, they laid it down along paths that they had established and knew how to sail because they had shipped a lot of stuff over them. Right? So the fact is, even just like we talked about, the long haul fiber optic infrastructure follows the railway and the highway networks, um, the long haul fiber optic cables that run across the ocean follow these old transatlantic shipping routes, right? So just lots of echoes of the past in terms of how we've wired up the modern internet. Um, if this stuff fascinates you as much as it fascinates me, um, there's a really good book called Tubes, A Journey to the Center of the Internet by Andrew Blum that I would recommend. Uh, he sort of takes you uh, through this part of the internet, the part that we don't see, these physical connections. There's a lot of really interesting things to talk about here.